mean that? Come on, try and let me hear you. Come with will of me. I will serve the Lord. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Choose you this day who you'll serve. Hallelujah. My God, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I found out that serving the Lord really does pay off. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait till the by and by. Hallelujah. He'll pay you right here and now. Glory to God. Has anybody enjoyed the benefits of the Lord? The benefits of serving the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, I promise you that there's greater and even more to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. While you're standing, just lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Understand that the sanctuary is a place of refuge. It's a place of safety. Hallelujah. Here we are in the house of God. Do you not know that being here today was a choice? There was a decision that you made to come out, to get dressed, and do whatever you had to do before you got here. It just doesn't make sense to me to do that and go through all of that and to make those choices and decisions and then get to God's house and act like you don't know what you come for. I'm going home a better way. I'm going home a better way. God, I thank you for this day, the opportunity, the privilege. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. With those hands lifted, I want you to clear your mind. Make room for him. God, there's some things that we need you to do for us. There's so many needs, oh God, around us. In our nation, in our community, in our state, in our city, oh God. You are the all-wise, all-seeing, all-knowing God. And it's to you, oh God, that we surrender ourselves, our lives, our bodies, our minds and our will. Oh God, our will be conformed to yours. Our will be conformed to yours. Father, I pray, oh God, that you'll help to condition us, our minds, oh God, that we might think right. Whatever things are lovely and just and pure and of a good report, think on these things. God, we thank you for how you help us. Give us the grace that we need. Hallelujah. And we give ourselves away to you. I pray, oh God, that in this moment, those who are viewing online, I pray, God, that you will meet them where they are. And oh God, the experience that we have in this house, let it transcend from this place. Oh God, permeate the spaces wherever we are. You're a God who's everywhere at the same time. Never found missing. It's you, O oh God, that we trust. Our confidence is in you. Have your way, Lord. Speak to us. God, you know exactly what we need. You know better how to give it to us than we know how to ask. But Father, you be glorified. Be glorified in all that's said and done. And let this offering to you be a sweet-smelling savor. Oh, God, we pray, oh, God, that your people be blessed, be edified, lifted, and encouraged, strengthened for the journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout, thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 And before you take your seats, let's go to the word of God. There is a word from the Lord. And as I've been reflecting this week and even in my personal devotional time and prayer time before the Lord, it's wonderful how God prepares us even before we know what's about to happen. He prepares us. Saints of God, we are at the point of no return. It's been reiterated and rehearsed all week long. Last Sunday I told you, take it or leave it. It's yes or no. Black or white, right. faith or doubt, faith or fear. If we're going to trust God, we have to trust God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
we're going to the Acts of the Apostles, the third chapter, and just three verses that we'll lift out in your hearing. Thank God for all of you who thought it not robbery to share with us. Amen. However means you are sharing today. We're going to read verses 8, 9, and 10. When you have it, I'll know it by your amen. amen. All right, let us read together aloud. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Amen. My thought this morning is simply this. Pick up where you left off. Pick up where you left off. Somebody say, reboot. Reboot. <laughs> Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do in this place. Your word is already blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Amen. Pick up where you left off. I came to encourage somebody. Uh, amen. Sometimes it's not necessary to start all the way from the beginning. Sometimes you just got to go back to the place to where you started doubting God. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to go back to the place to where you were interrupted. Sometimes you just have to go to back to the place to where the fight started. Revisit that place and then, amen, pick up where you left off. Amen. Get a reset. Get a reboot. Amen. Uh, a chance. And listen, the God that we serve is so wonderful. In fact, the uh, prophet Jeremiah says in the book of Lamentations um, that his mercies are new every morning. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Then he goes on to say, because his compassions fail not. That new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. And we, and when we as a people are faithful to this God, understand that God honors faithfulness. I thought there would be at least one witness in the house that can testify that God honors faithfulness. We live in a day and time now where commitment is almost like a cuss word. People don't want to be loyal or committed or dedicated to anything. They'll even make room to not be locked in. They'll answer you with vague answers and responses. Because can you do this? Uh, are you even willing to do this? I'll think about it. Oh, the saints got it real bad. Let me pray about that. <laughs> you ain't praying about nothing. In other words, get out of my face. Listen, let me pray about that. Let me talk to the Lord about that and see what he has to say. There's some things you don't have to go back and, you know, yes, acknowledge him in all of your ways, but there's some questions he already gave you the answer to before you asked. Yet there are some things that are just within our power to do. It's a matter of really do you want to do it. Sometimes we just have to reboot, reset. I don't care how long you've been saved, how long you've been walking with God, how, how, how good this relationship has been. Every once in a while, all of us need another dip. Every once in a while, we need a refresh. Every once in a while, we need to go back and be reminded. Uh, because, listen, as we carry on and do the business of the day, our, our daily bidding, amen, we, we lose strength. We're always giving out. Listen, you're, you're exercising. You're diminishing. But at, at, at some point, you have to refill. At some point, you have to go back and restock. At some point, you have to pause and take a rest. Breathe. <laughs> we'll find in this passage here, uh, moving from... Now, the, the, the book of the Acts of the Apostles is an interesting uh, book in the Bible. Amen. It, it, it talks about what these apostles did after Jesus had commissioned them to go out into all the world. But understand that he first called them in and gave them instructions. He, they spent time with him, and, and they learned of him. They watched Jesus doing the things that he was doing. And uh, he, he told them, I understand this, that uh, these and greater works shall you do. Uh, uh, but you only can do it in my name. You cannot do it of your own strength, of your own power or intellect. Amen. You can't think yourself into a wonderful place and then not do anything to get there. Faith without works is dead. 
Amen. Ah, we find that these apostles were acting out. They were doing the things that they saw Jesus doing. And many miracles were wrought because of what uh, Jesus did for them and how their following was after. Amen. What they had been taught. The first chapter, uh, you'll find that he, he tells them, you know, the, the apostle uh, is writing about the things that had already occurred. And uh, he, he tells the crowd as they were standing around, why are you standing here gazing? The same Jesus that you see going up, ascending to the fire. He's coming back. You're like, man, he's coming back again. But while he is away, there's something that the church must be found guilty of while he is Occupy yes, yes, yes. till I come. Yes, sir. Get to work. Mm -hmm. Spread the good news. Be a witness of him in all of the earth. Yes. Second chapter, we find them after they had uh, tarried and waited at uh, Jerusalem. I'm going to trust you to go back and look at this for yourself. I'm cutting some corners. I want to lay a little bit of foundation for you to see how we get to where we are today. The second chapter, uh, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and with one accord, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them a cloven tongue, like as a fire. Uh, the, the, the Spirit of God showed up for them because they were waiting they were there in anticipation. They believed that God would do just what he said. Have you ever been in a place where you've been waiting for God? You don't know how he's going to show up, but something on the inside tells you that. I just know that not only can God, but God will. They waited because Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. My God, three days came and went and Jesus got up. They saw that happen by many infallible proofs. He showed himself to be the Messiah. They had no reason to doubt. They had no reason to fear. They had no reason to wonder, will God do what he said that he would do? Is this the Jesus that we've been waiting for, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Meshach? Is this the one that we've been waiting for all this time? Yes, he is the one. You find them, the Bible says that men, devout Jews out of every nation under heaven had gathered at Jerusalem and uh, they saw, they witnessed the, 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 the downpouring, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and on that day they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They went out and they witnessed and they did work. They were empowered, amen. They grabbed hold of what they believed and it became a reality for them. Can I say that one more time? They grabbed hold of what they believed and it became a reality to them. One more time. They grabbed hold of what they believed and it became a reality to them. Your faith has to materialize. Your faith has to materialize. Your faith has to materialize. We're not just going through the motion. We're not just saying we believe God. We believe God. I got some kind of nerve saying that for somebody else. Anybody, any witnesses in the house? I believe God. All right. Amen. Sometimes you got to say it until you are convinced in your spirit. There's some things we say out of our mouth and it's not materialized. It's not, it doesn't come together. It doesn't gel for us because your spirit doesn't believe what your mouth is saying. But when it comes together and when your faith is, oh my God, glory to God. When what you say matches up to what's going on in the spirit, when you agree with what God says, hallelujah, things will happen for you. I know what I'm talking about. You can look sickness and disease in the face and use the word of God and speak it with conviction, with authority, with power, and by his stripes we are healed. But he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. 
and with his stripes we are healed. I dare you to start speaking your healing before sickness ever shows up and knocks at your door. Faith people say crazy stuff like that. I'm already delivered. Delivered from what? You ain't even been through nothing yet. I'm speaking my way out before I get there. And we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Use the word. It works. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Y'all don't mess with me. I feel something happening down on the inside. Because when I start thinking about what God can do because of what he's already done, glory, my faith is stirred up. Glory to God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I say use the word. That might be for somebody right there. Pick up where you left off. When's the last time you've been in the word of God? Amen. And you felt something when you said it. When you felt something when you read it. Hallelujah. When the word of God is alive to you. Girl, you can't read this word and not feel nothing. I don't care what you do. If you got any ounce of God in you, you can't say stuff like, and oh my God. Who's your separator? From the love of God shall tribulation, persecution, famine, or sword. No, none of these things. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that love. Come on, say, use the word, use the word, use the word, use the word. <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. The grass withering and the flower fadeth away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Stop acting like y'all ignoring what's going on in the world and, and came to the house of God to be with him and to hear something from to hear something other than what the media is saying. Sit, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I told somebody yesterday there has to come a point when we practice what we preach. I said it this morning. I heard it a couple of times this week. Hey Amen. They tell me that Bishop Sherman said you can't preach weakness and strength at the same time. That's what I heard. <laughs> a double-minded man is unstable and use the word. Death and life and the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit. Believe what you say. Believe what God said. Amen. And agree with it. Yo, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I, I want to get y'all to the third chapter. So after the second chapter, uh, you know, the crowd was out there and they're wondering and looking and they're seeing all the things going on. And uh, somebody said, these men are drunk. Y'all acting crazy. They drunk. Y'all own something. <laughs> oh, oh, these are not drunken as you suppose. Seeing that this is only the third hour of it, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. A good drunk don't start drinking that early in the morning. Uh, but this is that. That was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men, listen, they're going to dream dreams, and the young men going to see visions. On my handmaid, no servant, in that day will I pour out of my spirit. And so they were there, they were there, and, 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 and they encouraged, they, they believed what they heard, and they were excited, and the Bible says 3,000 were added to the church that day. And uh, guess what happens when we get to the third chapter? We find two apostles. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me, let me teach this lesson. 
we find two apostles. The Bible says going to the temple to pray. When they get there, they find laying at the gate called beautiful. Let me tell you something about this beautiful gate. It could be seen from many different places. It was uh, known uh, that, uh, well, it's said that a Corinthian designer built this. This beautiful gate was a mighty spectacle. People came from far and near to see this, but this gate was right at the temple. As beautiful as the gate was, there was an ugly situation going on. There was a man laying there, and the Bible says, asking of alms. He had been there a long time. He had been doing this for a good while. Somebody brought him to the temple daily to beg. They didn't have a welfare system then. We ain't going to talk about him. They brought him there daily to beg. This day, two apostles show up. And as he had been doing all the other times, asking of alms, give me some money. Do you have something that you can give me to help my situation? The Bible says that one of them, Peter says to him, listen, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. And he gave to this beggar who was laying at the gate called Beautiful. He gave to him the name that is above every name. The name that you can apply to any situation. The name that when you call, things got to change. The name that the Bible says that at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Gave him the name of Jesus. Didn't just give him Jesus' name, but I tell you, your faith has to have an object. And when your faith has an object, amen, that means that it's got something that it's directed toward. Amen. It reached out to him and took his hand. And the Bible says that the man stood up. He received strength in his ankle bones. I wonder why would the Bible mention his ankles above all of the other things? Oh, my God. Let me come back to that. Silver and gold, we don't have any of that. And oh, this man had been there so long that everybody knew who he was. They expected to see him when they went to the temple. There's some people who come here that look at, they expect to see some of y'all don't care what's going on. Rain, sleet, snare, what would you call it, other ghost? Rain, sleet, snow, whatever. I told him, I said, listen, we having church uh, Sunday morning. I already know. He says, Sherman don't close for nothing. <laughs> hey, glory to God. He received strength in his ankle bone. And then let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text. I'm going to go back to the text. I'm going to go back to the text. And then I'm going to take you in just a little further. And when they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate. Listen, after this man who had been stepped over, some would give, some wouldn't. And I'm sure he was appreciative of whatever he received. But all of those people that were giving him all the things that they gave him, nobody gave him what he really needed. What do you really need? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We really need God above anything else. You need Jesus more than you need tissue. We get these points to ponder. We see four things happening in the passage that we read. <laughs> Woo four things happen. They tell him, they said, look on us. Look at us. Open your eyes. Lift up. You need to look. I, I want to get your attention. Uh, after he looked, he looked on the apostles, but understand he was looking at them. They were just there. They were the vessels that God chose to use at the time because they were willing and they were available. Uh -huh. they, they were available. And I tell you, this is after they received power. In the second chapter, that's why I went back there. This is the first miracle of the church. I said, it's the first miracle of the church. Look at us. 
He looked at them and he saw them. What am I looking at? All I see is regular men standing before you. But listen, when the world acknowledges and recognizes the fact that we are more than just regular people, child of God, you are the anointed of God. You're not just looking at a regular man. He put his pants on just like I do, one leg at a time. Amen. Anybody with two legs, that's how you got to put them on. But understand, that, listen, there's a difference. The anointing. Look. After he looked at them, the Bible says that, that Peter took his hand and he stood. You got to stand up. God will allow us to participate in our own miracles. I said he'll allow us to participate in our own miracles. How bad do you want it? Stand up for it. He gave him the ability to stand. Do you not know this man who never stood didn't know what standing was? He knew what standing looked like, but he didn't know what it felt like. God will call you to do things you've never done before. You've only imagined what does it feel like to do that. My God, he said, listen, let me show you. Can you trust me for it? If you can believe me for it, I'll do it for you. Glory to God. He stands up. The Bible says, and then he started walking. Walking like what Rita said, a natural man. Didn't know what walking felt like, but he knew what it looked like. I want y'all to get this. I promise I'm going to get out your way. Oh, he looked, he stood, and then he walked. But walking got so good and it wasn't enough. I got to do something else to let God know that I appreciate what he's done for me. Listen, I, I better add a praise to this. <laughs> hey, tell him thank you. Uh, listen, uh, I've been in situations so where I've looked and I've wondered what does it feel like to be like that and what, does it, well, what is it like to be able to, to do this and to do that and he's let me live long enough to find out what it feels like. He let me live long enough to know what it is to be healed. He let me live long enough to know what it feels like to not have to be living from paycheck to paycheck and wondering what's going to happen in between. Uh, 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 uh. these are the instructions listen follow take as directed on the back of most medicine bottles especially those liquids they tell you shake well but all of those prescriptions they tell you to what follow the orders follow the instructions take as directed use as directed uh -huh. you got to follow and say if you want those active ingredients to work for you you've got to follow the prescription silver and gold have I none but such as I have amen take this Jesus Let him work for you. Uh, the active ingredient is your faith. Glory to God. Take it as directed. Glory to God. Oh, and then he's leaping. Now, how do I get to pick up where you left off? As we read in the ninth and the tenth verses, after this man had received his miracle, after he had received his healing, Glory to God. He went into the temple with everybody else. We read it in the eighth verse. He went into the temple with everybody else. See, everybody wasn't there for the miracle. Y'all won't catch hold of that. The miracle happened in private. <laughs> I said the miracle happened in private. You can imagine the surprise of all of those who stepped over this man. Some of them who felt like they did what they could to help him. And the only reason why you're as blessed as you are is because of what I did for you. Oh, some people will have that kind of attitude. You only got this far in life because I was there to bless you. Uh huh. But listen, what God shows up to do for that attitude is you can't do for me what God can do. <laughs> Hey, all of those who stepped over him, some helped and some didn't. Some, my God, if they act like we act today, some were shaking their head. I'm on my way to church and here this trash is out here in the way. 
Why did they bring you here? People are coming to worship. These are decent folk. And, and here you are laying out on the street begging, all dirty and probably stink. Listen, and, and they had the wrong kind of attitude. All those that saw him, they knew who he was. Some of them been seeing him for years. And they gloried in the fact that you're still down. You're right where I left you last time. But here when God shows up for him, uh, listen, do you want what God has for you? Uh, you can take it or leave it. The options are on the table. It's being presented for you, to you. Listen, and so he received his healing, but he didn't take his healing and run away from the gate. He didn't take his healing and run away from the temple. What God did for him wasn't done publicly where everybody could see it. Uh, my God, Jesus tells his disciples, he says, listen, when you pray, go into the closet and shut the door. And when the door has been shut, then you start talking to God and watch and see if God won't reward you openly for what you've done privately. Somebody shout glory to God. Everybody wasn't there to see the miracle when it happened, but they were all there to hear the testimony. Uh, he didn't take his blessing and run away with it. No, I'm going back and I'm going to let the devil know what you meant for evil. God has worked out for my good. What you tried to use to destroy me, God has used it to make me better. When you tried to kill me, understand that life is in God's hand. It's God that controls the universe. It's God that controls the world. It's God that controls the heart of the king. And if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. You said, I'll hear from heaven. I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal the land. And I will forgive your sins. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't trust a God like this? All he's waiting on is for us to trust him. All he's waiting on for us to call him. He's only waiting for you to pick up where you left off. You used to believe God could do anything. Then you heard the news and you started wondering, God, you can do that. But can you do this? He does not change. You said I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The word of our God is forever. Somebody shout glory to God. Oh, oh that's a good place to give him a praise. So what does this man do? He went right in the temple. He didn't go in like the others who were already there. It must have been a solemn assembly because apparently this man interrupted the meeting. He got everybody's attention. And the Bible says, and when they knew it was the same man who was begging for alms, they wanted to know how is this? What are we looking at? How is it that this man who's been lame all his life is now walking, praising God? He stood up, he walked, and then he started leaping and praising God. How is it that he can do all of this? This is that. This is a thing that we've been waiting for. This is a thing that we've been praying for. This is the time when God will be God. This is the time that when the God who is God will answer by fire. Oh, y'all catch that next time. <laughs> They saw him and they heard him. Oh, when you get it and get it right, oh, you will make some noise. Oh, they used to call us the noisy crew. 
Now everybody's making noise, but I promise you, it ain't the same kind of noise. Hallelujah, it's not the same kind of noise. Pentecost, carry the sound. Holy people, carry the sound. Real praise, carry the sound. A real praise can give God the root eye. Somebody shout glory to God. The root eye is a different kind of praise. The root eye will split the enemy's ear. When a praise, a shown up praise. When one who's been delivered, shown up delivered. When one that's been free, and shown up free. Free indeed. You're making a different kind of sound. Pick up. Where you left off, side on, restart, refresh, renew, come on and say reboot. Oh, I like this man. I like this man. He got their attention. Ah. Listen, run and tell that. I didn't say nothing when everybody was talking about me. I didn't say nothing when they said it won't never be nothing. I didn't say anything when they were calling in their curses. I went to the word of God and the Bible says that when God bless you, no man can curse you. Hallelujah. And what God calls curse, let no man dare to try to bless. Hallelujah. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. My storehouses are full and my back's are running over because I believe God for excess. Overflow and more than enough. Excess. Overflow and more than enough. Won't he do it? Huh. If you pick up where you left off with the joy you used to have, he'll give you some more joy. If you pick up when you left off with the peace that you used to have, he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. Hey, hey, woo! Woo! I wonder if there's anybody here that praised him last week. Oh, that was all right for last week. But if you pick up where you left off, it'll take you over to the next level. It'll take you over to the next place. Let 
let your praise be your testimony. Let your praise be your testimony. I can show you better than I can tell you. Because I found out when praises go up. I said when praises go up. You ain't got the power to pay. You ain't got the power to pay. Let another comedian say what he wanna say.
your gifts, that you're bringing, your tithes and your offerings, spirit of gratitude and appreciation. If the Lord has been good to you, just tell him you've been so good. When is the last 